Hey everyone, it's Morgan and I'm back with another video. So today I have a book for review and I was actually given this book to review by the author and this is my first time um, being afforded that opportunity so I would like to thank Joy Harris herself for get, allowing me this opportunity to review her book. And the book I am discussing is Singing Ain't Enough the inspiring story of Maggie Ingram, and it is the biography of her grandmother. So, Joy Harris um, writes in the beginning of the book that it took her 10 years of research to do this book on her grandmother, and it definitely shows. She also includes a lot of family pictures, um, some of the lyrics of her grandma that her grandmother wrote, and things of that nature to um, really support and give a full picture of her grandmother's life. Um, I think she did a, a good job at putting together her grandmother's life in a coherent way for readers to the point where she even um, puts a chart or timeline, number line, at the beginning of each chapter. So immediately I was drawn in by the prologue. She discusses how um, she was married, had kids, and decided to go visit her grandmother one day. You know, I say that to say, like, you know, she was busy living her own life. Decides to gra visit her grandmother one day and realizes that her grandmother is not the same woman she she remembers from her childhood. Um, and that immediately pulled me in personally because I understand that feeling. Um, and it is, when you realize it, it is a very... Um, shocking and disheartening moment as she reflected in the prologue. So um, go, moving forward in the story or the biography, it is pretty much a cut and dry biography of the events in Maggie Ingram's life. Um, mostly it evolve, revolves around um, her singing career, which was very important to her grandmother, and it shows the trials and tribulations she had to go through to um, keep the career, and while also, you know, just being a black woman in the South, you know, and raising a family. And um, even though singing was very important to her, that was not the only thing um, that she focused on. And of course, the music being gospel, you know, faith, you know, her Christianity was very much a part of her life. And that type of faith um, is reflected in these pages. Um, I think the author did a great job at that as well, um, reflecting her grandmother's faith while also kind of pr promoting um, a Christian faith or faith in God throughout the pages. Um, the back also has questions um, based on the book that you could add, um, used to talk about um, in a book club setting and they are to me they seem um, faith-based as well which I think will be good for people who are looking for like um, a good Christian reads I know some people here on YouTube watch uh, or I shouldn't say watch but read a lot of um, Christian fiction and things of that nature so I think people who um, like reading faith-based books will like this book as well um, one thing I could also tell in the book, which sometimes threw me off, was I could tell the difference in the authority that the author had while writing. Um, closer to the end of the book, obviously, when the author was alive and actually, you know, recounting her own memories of her grandmother, not pulling from interviews or the memories of others, but, you know, writing about her own memories of her grandmother, there was much more authority in her writing. Um, there was more um, feeling and emotion in her writing, and I connected with those chapters more um, because it seemed like the author connected with those moments more in the book. So while the book was very consistent at um, telling the life of her grandmother, you could see where the author um, connected with her own writing more than in certain other parts of the book. Um, and those were the parts I was, if I didn't state before, were, were more interested in, um, which also made me think of like how, you know, more interesting it might have been if she had 
not just done a biography, but maybe written more about her personal relationship with her grandmother in certain in instances. So overall, um, I also wrote, uh, um, rated this book on Goodreads as four stars. I say I give it about 3.5, but I round up on Goodreads um, just for a simple fact that I don't give you halves and, you know, decimal points. Um, I did not find any like grammatical errors. The writing was simplistic yet um, clean. It was crisp. It was, um, it's something that you could easily read and discuss, which is great. Um, she also puts a notes section in the back, which I was impressed with because I actually don't see that in many books that I don't think I've seen that in any um, books or definitely not any biographies. Um, and as for somebody who reads a lot of fiction in general, I think it was um, interesting and awesome to read about a actual person from but who was living between like the 1930s and today. Um, I, a lot of you know I was doing some reading on Toni Morrison and um, she writes about women during this time period a lot and it's nice to see how the f her fiction reflects the actual lives of women um, during this time. This book also reflects, you know, the struggles that black women had to go through facing raci racism and sexism. And specifically in this book, um, music, you know, dealing with the music industry as well. Um, so, yes, I would like to thank the author Joy Harris again um, for sending me this book to review. Those of you who are interested, pick up Singing Ain't Enough. I will put the link to the Amazon account or I should say the link to the book which is on Amazon at the bottom of this video and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!